In this video tutorial, we're going to be discussing a planning and scheduling technique known as network analysis. Now the example that I'm going to be referring to is from a document by a Mr. Michael C. Glenn. So if you're interested in understanding a little bit more about this example and how the process is carried out, then I recommend searching for that document. I have provided a PDF copy on the study platform for Engineers Academy students. So what we have displayed on the screen here is a basic schematic or the start of a network for a network analysis. And as you can see, the schematic moves from left to right. So what we have is a number of different tasks. If we begin on the left hand side with our design task, we have a component here that needs to be designed. What you'll notice is that no other processes or activities can take place until the design has been completed. Once the design has been completed, if we continue along the top row, we need to purchase some materials. And the assumption that we're making here is that those materials are going to be made to produce two different components. One of those components needs to be cut and welded, so it's a fabricated component, and one of those components needs to be machined. Once we've produced those two components, they need to be assembled and tested before we can finish manufacturing that component. Now, if we continue to look at that top line, we can see that two activities can run concurrently. We have the cutting and welding of one component and the machining of another component. If you like, these two processes can be carried out in different areas of a factory by different people. One activity doesn't need to be completed before the next activity can be started. However, referring back to the previous step, purchase, we do need to purchase the materials before we can fabricate the first component and before we can machine the second component. So what we can see here is that some tasks are dependent on others and other tasks can run concurrently. Now this brings us to the next section of the diagram. Here we have the preparation of an instruction manual. And this instruction manual is being written to enable the testing of the design. But once again, the writing of this manual can take place whilst the materials are being sourced and whilst the components are being manufactured and assembled. So we see that once the design process has been completed, we can begin writing that manual. There's a couple of activities that can run side by side, the writing of the document and the production of any associated drawings. But what we can't do is complete the final edit until we have all of the drawings and all of the written material. So we have the writing and drawing running side by side or concurrently. And then we have the final editing of the document, which needs to be completed before any testing can take place. What we're going to do in this example is we're going to identify which of these activities have to start first and whether there's any leeway or slack with any of these activities. Finally, we're going to determine the critical path and the earliest possible completion of this complete process. So pictured on the screen here, I have the same diagram from the same document, but in the top center of each box, we have the expected duration of each task. So we have the design task taking 10 days, purchase 21 days, and so on. Now I'm going to add to this diagram, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add something called the earliest possible start time, or the earliest start time. And the earliest start time is going to go in the top left hand corner of each box. If we imagine ourselves on day zero, then the earliest start time for the design task is day zero. And in the top right hand corner, I'm going to add something called the earliest finish time. Now the earliest finish time for the design task is going to be day 10 because we start on day zero and it takes 10 days. If we continue across, the earliest start time that we can begin purchasing our materials is after the design task has been completed. So we take the earliest finish time of our design stage and that becomes the earliest start time of our purchase phase. The earliest finish time of our purchase phase is 21 days after the earliest start time. So all we're doing is we're adding the earliest start time to the duration. In this case, giving us 31. Cut can start on day 31 and last five days. Earliest finish time, day 36. Welding can start on day 36, last six days, so finishes on day 42. But now we can't determine the earliest start time of assemble because we haven't evaluated the other task that connects to that task or precedes that task. 
So what we need to do is we need to look at our machine task. Now the machining task can't take place until the materials have been purchased. So our earliest finish time for purchase is 31. And that becomes our earliest start time for machining. 31 plus our 8 gives us 39. So what we can see here is assembly can only take place when the welding is finished. The machining finishes sooner. The machining finishes on day 39, but we can't start assembling it until we've also finished welding, which finishes on day 42. So our earliest start time for assemble is day 42. Earliest finish time is day 47. Now following the same reasoning, we don't know what day we can start testing, so we need to evaluate the other branch in our diagram. We've said that design takes 10 days, so writing can't commence until day 10. It takes 14 days, which brings us to day 24. Also for drawing, drawing can't start until day 10 when design's finished. It takes 8 days, giving us 18. Now if we evaluate the edit task, we can't start the edit task until writing and drawing's finished. Writing finishes after drawing on day 24, so that becomes the earliest start time for our edit task. 24 plus 5 gives us 29, meaning the testing of this particular component can't take place until assembly is finished on day 47. 47 plus 2 gives us 49. And the finishing activities can't commence until day 49. They last three days, giving us an earliest finish time of this project of 52 days. So providing all of our tasks start at the earliest possible time, this project can be completed in 52 days. So what we've just done there is called a forward pass because we've gone through the process from start to finish. What we're going to do next is something called a backward pass. Now the purpose of the backward pass is to identify any slack in these activities. Some of these activities can start later than the earliest start time and it won't affect the overall schedule. So what we do when we conduct a reverse pass is we start with our earliest finish time. That's fixed, we don't want this project to overrun. So we have 52 days. This is known as the latest finish time. And what we want to determine is something called the latest start time. And that's the latest start time that will still enable completion of our project in 52 days. What we're doing this time is we're taking the latest finish time and we're subtracting the duration. The duration here is 3, so 52 minus 3 means the latest this task can start is day 49. Therefore, the latest test can finish, or the latest finish time is day 49. 49 minus 2 gives us the latest start time of day 47. OK. Let's go to the tasks along the bottom next. The latest we can finish the edit task is day 47. It lasts five days, therefore the latest start time is day 42. Therefore the latest finish time of our draw task is day 42. Providing we finish the draw task by day 42, we can start the edit task on time. 42 minus 8 is 34. We'll come back to the design task in a moment. The latest that we can finish the right task is also day 42. It lasts 14 days, meaning that the latest it can be started is day 28. Let's continue through the top of the network. Assemble. The latest that assemble can start is day 47. It takes five days, so it must start by day 42. The same is true for welding and machining. They must both be finished by day 42. 42 minus 6 is 36. 42 minus 8 is 34. The cut task must be finished by day 36. 
and it must be started by day 31. Now, when we get to the purchase task, what we're looking for is the latest that that task must be finished. Well, if we look at machining, machining would allow for that task to be finished on day 34. And machining would then still be able to start at its latest possible time. But cut requires it to be completed on day 31. Therefore, the latest finish time for purchase must be day 31. Otherwise, the cut task can't take place on time. 31 minus 21 is 10. Now, applying the same logic to design, we have the purchase task which needs to start by day 10. Write needs to start on day 28 and draw needs to start on day 34. But in order for purchase to start on time, design must finish on day 10. So what we've identified there is that some of these tasks have an element of slack. And by slack, what we mean is a difference between the earliest start time and the latest start time. It doesn't actually matter if we start it at the earliest possible time. So the way that we determine slack is by taking the latest start time in the bottom left and subtracting the earliest start time at the top left. And we position slack in the center here. So for the design task, there's no slack because it has to start on day zero. Its earliest and latest start time is both day zero. If we move to the purchase task, we have earliest start time and latest start time, both as 10. And if we continue along the top row, we can see that that's the case for all of these tasks, all the way through to finish. What we've just identified there then is something called the critical path. All of those tasks must take place at the earliest possible start time, otherwise the completion of the project is going to overrun. If we look at our machining task, we've said that the latest machining could start is day 34, and the earliest it could start is day 31. So in actual fact we have three days of slack, because it doesn't matter if we start on day 31, 32, 33 or 34. That's what we mean by slack. We've got a little bit of leeway or flexibility there. If we move down to our right task then, we have an earliest start time of 10 days and a latest start time of 28 days, meaning we actually have 18 days worth of slack in that task. Directly underneath, 34 minus 10 gives us 24 days of slack. And in our edit task, we also have some slack ranging from 24 days to 42 days, which is also 18 days worth of slack. So what we've seen here is how we can go about prioritizing tasks based on any flexibility within the schedule. Along the top line, we have our critical path because there's no slack in the design task. There's no slack in the purchase task. There's no slack in the cut task, meaning it has to start on day 31. Welding has to start on day 36. Assembly must start on day 42 in order to enable completion within the shortest time scale of 52 days. Those tasks with slack, let's take machining as an example, can either start on day 31, 32, 33, or 34, meaning there's actually three days worth of slack in that task. As mentioned, if you'd prefer to read through this example, then the document that we've been using here is a guide to network analysis by Michael C. Glenn.